On this episode, we finish off Big Cat Climb, start work on Mammoth Mount, and make a very special vehicle. Welcome to the ultimate wildlife sanctuary. Welcome to Prehistoric Park. What's up guys? We're back again and we're going to start off getting right into it here. We're going to be adding some touches to the Big Cat Climb. There were a few things that I had to go, I had to go back in and change to just make it match more. I got a couple of critiques from a from a couple of people, and I I do listen to the critiques. If something's wrong, I'm going to try to fix it. People said the poles were a little too big. They said the middle fence was a little too low, and I also added in the gate between both enclosures. So that should all be good now. It's. It should be accurate now. This won't take too long, or at least I hope it won't. Now, for the Land Rover, I really kind of clickbaited you guys with that intro. It's not going to look that finished in this episode because there was so much footage that I'm going to have to split it into two parts, otherwise this would be like a 50 minute video. But we get about halfway done and then we go from there, so. Next episode will definitely be finishing it off. It is finished now, but you guys won't see it finished until mm, next episode. Well, I guess you saw it pretty much in its finished state in the intro. We're adding this rope here too, because you can see in the series how they actually lift that gate. There's just a guy standing behind the uh, shelters. And now we're getting into the Jeep. This was really, really tedious to make. I'm using these bars to kind of get the proper scale and all of that this is going to be so hard to commentate like oh my gosh this is going to be very very hard it is just a jeep or a land rover not a jeep but it's uh i mean i'm not a car person really so this is already hard but now I'm like what am I supposed to say about the car I am not a car person so we got the scale over there we moved it over here away from all these people also that area there that's got like the nursery and stuff is gonna go away it's just there to like serve as spawning guests and the nurseries are sitting there so that won't stay right now we're really just blocking it out and just trying to find that scale and I find it works easier when working with things like this if you color it in it kind of makes you more inspired other than just like all white. But we checked again to make sure that it was the right scale. And I think we nailed it. Speaking of not, not, okay, I cannot speak today guys, sorry. Speaking of nailing it, something I realized we did not nail 
was the tractor size. Because I use the Triceratops as a scale for it instead of like a person, it is massive. And I think the reasoning is that Theo was a young male and not a grown adult, which is why when I scale it using an adult Triceratops, it just looks massive. But it's, it's not a hard fix. All I have to do is scale the pieces down and it'll be good. We're still kind of just getting the frame and the general build of the car all down. It was a little difficult in the beginning, but once you get this down, the rest is pretty easy. And I mean, this is just about the final shape. Uh, I don't think that there is uh, any major adjustments to this made, except for the uh, window pane, which we had to raise a little bit to make it a little taller. But other than that, it's good. The thing about the vehicles in this show is that what I'm using to uh, find information about these vehicles, it's a internet movie car database. And they have a lot of really good resources for figuring out what these cars actually look like and stuff. But the problem is there were like 50 cars on there of like Land Rover 90, Land Rover 110, Land Rover Defender 90, all these like different, it's the same car basically but it's just different because of semantics and there, it is the internet movie car database, I think they really really care about this stuff. But I went with the Land Rover 90 which is the one that they normally use around the park and the one that normally Nigel drives around the intro. There's also like a Toyota something I forget, which is shown in the Big Cat episode. I might make it one day, but these take a lot of time. And I don't even know if they're even fun to watch for you guys. Speaking of you guys, thank you guys so much for all of the support on this series so far. It has been absolutely crazy because, I mean, before this, I was getting maybe 20 views a video. I used to get a couple more before I stopped uploading for like two years, but like a thousand views on both videos. That's crazy. So just thank you guys so much. It's insane the support that this has gotten. Now these fenders were really, really difficult because their shape is just so strange. So what I ended up doing is basically what you see here, where there's these gaps in them. I tried to fill them in and it just didn't work, but it's already going to be covered up because there is like a, a bar that runs down the side of the car. So I just decided it'd be easier to just leave them like that. Like see here, how I was trying to fill them in and it just didn't work well, so we scrapped that idea and just left it how it was. You can't 
if you try to strive for a perfect build, it's just never going to work out right. So we do the best we can, and when we can't achieve perfect, we just roll with it. I do think that these spent, we spent the most time on these and then the rest of it is just finishing it up real fast because they took so long, which is unfortunate, but I mean, what can you do? I feel like so many people are gonna see this long time lapse of just building a Land Rover and they're just gonna click off the video. It's really, really tedious. We are almost done with this, I promise. So, then we will move on to the Mammoth Mount, which, it's a really simple enclosure. I don't think it's difficult at all. It was pretty much just the fence design and then you can just roll with it and just, the whole thing is done in like 30 minutes. Alright, so here we are going into the Mammoth Mount build. Sorry if um, I sound tired today. I have been so busy today. So, I keep like having to stop recording and just like take a breath because I am just tired. Like a really deep breath too. It's like, <gasps> oh, you know. So we use this guest spawner to kind of tell how big the railing needs to be. I don't know how they contain a mammoth like this. I guess Martha is pretty docile compared to maybe like a, a bull woolly mammoth. But yeah, it's like four pieces of fence like this and then another one with four like separated pieces right next to it, which is connected with rope. Which is how it's so like modular because in the series they kind of like move the fences around and stuff. And I think the reason is these fence pieces are just held together with rope and whenever they want to move it they can just untie it and move them out the way. Because like when they introduced Martha to the matriarch elephant they have the gate in the middle and when they give her a haircut, they have like one moved back and then two Jeeps beside it in order to keep her closed in but where they can still climb up and cut her hair. So, we uh, we just went with the square approach. We aren't gonna make it like one of the special occasions where they cut her hair or introduce her an elephant, but 
think it's all right. I think it looked pretty good in the end. There is more to the exhibit, I guess, or I wouldn't say exhibit. There's more to this area, like the open plains when Martha's allowed to roam free. I'm not really sure how it works. I guess she can roam free and then they just bring her back during the night or something, or I'm not sure. But there's a lot of open space, and I just don't think it'd be good to fill that in with the planes that the elephants roam until we have everything else in. Because if we make them too big or too small, it's just going to have no point because we we'll have to go back and redo it anyways. So we just start with this for today. And that's all we really need from it. The rest, really, we don't have a very clear picture of how it all looks, I guess. It's really just planes, really just African planes. So we do get Martha in here and unlike the saber teeth she does seem to stay in thank goodness because even after I shrunk the pulse down they still just run through them and escape I don't understand really can't cannot wait for them no barriers to come in another thing before this episode comes to a close we don't know where the Terror Bird and Elasmotherium pins are located, because they aren't on the map. So my plan for them is going to be the Terror Bird is going to be located somewhere around T-Rex Hill and the Erythomimus Pond. My reason for this is because the Terror Bird, or the Titanosaur, sorry, crashed through all three exhibits which means they would have to be fairly close together unless it somehow went from one end of the park to the other and then back to the other side so that's my logic behind that my other logic is that the elasmotherium has to be nearby because the terror bird when it escaped its enclosure it went to the elasmotherium pin when they had to get it to uh, chase the meat again so they're all going to probably be next to each other and that's really just deductive reasoning really because like i said there's not really a clear answer but i'm trying to make this accurate and i think that's the best way to do it So yeah, we are just about done here, got everything done, and we actually moved this around because where the sign is doesn't make sense for where I'd originally placed the path. This way it makes more sense. There's a lot of doo-doo, a lot of dookie, but I think this turned out great and I'm really having a lot of fun with this series and it's all been great uh, and she pooped again so leaving the time lapse now I'll leave you guys to view the cinematic shots
And that's going to be all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed it, because it helps me out a ton. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Goodbye.